Elijah, welcome to Skillets Worlds. We're in Brighton in Old Market. Uh, in a few moments, we're going to be seeing a special performance of your album, Close the App, Make the Ting with Jams. This is a 360 immersive experience of all the yellow post-it notes that you posted from 2021 that's taking the world by storm. Uh, let's talk about that. I mean, we were in the pandemic. Nothing was happening. You decided to write some words of wisdom, some gems, some advice, some, you know, just dropping some jewels there for, some, for, for, for up and coming musicians. What made you want to do that? And are you surprised where that's gone and how, you know, how far that's taken it? Yeah, definitely. So I started it just as everything was opening up July 2021, like the music scene. I don't know what it was going to be after it had been closed for 18 months. I was figuring out whether I'm still useful, whether like the things I learned over the last like 13 years were still helpful post pandemic. I just asked questions at the beginning and Instagram was like never really my thing, was never like sharing selfies yeah. or anything like that. It's like how to use social media in a way that's interesting for me. I've always written stuff, always kind of documented my thing. So it was like a combination of those two things and something that's just easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Very basic. Writing ideas on iPads, sharing it as I get the ideas and keeping it moving. And correct me if, if I'm wrong, were, were you doing talks to, because uh, you know you do a lot of talks yeah. to a, way, a wide range of people who, who are into music and whatnot. Were you doing that before you started documenting these notes? Here and there, it was like a minor thing. Um, just occasionally do a guest lecture, occasionally talk about some of the stuff I worked on at the label, maybe do panels here and there. It's just if someone asked. Yeah. It was not something that was like actively pitching to get. And even now, right. like I just, if someone asked, yeah, I'd be like, if I can do it, then I'll do it. You, you, I mean, I feel like with, you really hit a spot with a lot of people here. A lot of people resonate with what you're trying to convey. I feel like with music, there's always this, un, this well, there's always a stereotype or cliche of way of how to do things, especially with art. And you just cut through all of that nonsense. You're just telling people, no, like, just focus on yourself, keep working. It's not, it's not as easy as, you know, when the people say stuff like, um, for example, hard work pays off and stuff yeah. like that. Like, you just cut through all of that. Like, how important is it for you to, like, let people know there's different ways of thinking about how you can create your art? Yeah, I think that, like, the art of even, yeah, thinking about this stuff has, like, become more important because you're hearing the same things. Yeah, hard work pays off. Um, trust your gut. I'm like, what does that mean? Mm, like, what mm. does trust the process? I don't know what that means. Like, what is going to be like most useful in a post pandemic, in a cost of living crisis, in a situation where we grew up maybe and not everyone got to participate in art in some meaningful way, where now you can, like now you're on the same platform as the pop stars. Yeah. And it looks the same, but you're not in the same industry. You're not yeah. in the same thing, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't be putting out your ideas, you know? One of the um, notes that really took off was close the app create the thing, which yeah. is obviously inspired the album as well. Oh, I should say close out and make the thing. Um, do you feel that's, that, I mean, obviously that's resonating with me full, because I think with me, because I, I do a lot of music and there's times where I just think, oh, I'm going to wait till this day or that, and that's just, it's nonsense, isn't it? It's, yeah, uh, there's no tomorrow. Like, you know, every, everything that we experienced through that period of time and even since, it's like, man, you might not even get a second chance or like, you know, maybe the idea that you're going to do today is completely different to the one tomorrow. That's where that time is the creative director came from. And because that made the thing, I said it, sent it to a friend, but it's also for me. Yeah. I'm on there doom scrolling. I'm on there like replying to people. I'm on there reading tweets and all this stuff when I need to go and make stuff yeah. and make stuff happen. So without me making the stuff too in this project, it doesn't even make sense. It's just like someone sending empty platitudes. It's like, oh, uh, I should have probably made something now, it? So that's just what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I might yeah. as well make the thing out of making the thing. So when was the point you were like, okay, I want to make a concept album with all the notes, and then why was Jams, which I definitely believe was the perfect person for that project, why, why did you know he was the perfect person for that? Yeah, so there was a, a gram instrumental called Cami Rhythm by Blay Vision, sick producer, a lot of gram MCs were doing versions, and first of all, I was like, I want to do a version. I'm not, I'm not a rapper, I'm not MC. I was like, there's, I've written all of this stuff, I want it in MC form. So I asked Jams, because he's, he's got a good way of like, telling a story as an MC, um, especially at 140 BPM, I was like, cool, let me just ask him. And he broke it down like, you know, like 10 crack commandments, like the Notorious B.I.G song, like 10 principles. Yeah. And then I sat on it for months, and it, it's not like I didn't think of it again, I was just sitting down in January, 
one day and I was like, hold on, I've been writing even more since then. It was like six months later. Why don't I just do a whole album with that concept? Amazing. And, it's, and instead of like actually having other MCs, I could have asked a whole bunch of people. I was like, no, nah, keep it focused, one voice. So it's like, it's a bit of me, it's a bit of him. And yeah, there's like, yeah, a genuine collaboration. And for both of us, I was like, it's got to be done in a week. <laughs> we had one day to record it. And then, yeah, yeah sick. like even that part being part of the process and being close to it was, was, was awesome. If we circle back to, the, to your beginnings, you know, I've known you for a long time and you've always had a passion for music or some, or some sort of creativity. Um, even with the early days of grime, you were very heavily uh, involved in different ways before you started really homing in into becoming a DJ. Um, when you started your Butters Nights and you got the team together, um, what was your aim? Because I know you and I don't think it was to be successful. I don't think it was to be rich or famous. I just think you had a drive in you and you just wanted to convey some sort of art in that world. Yeah, I think, like, I just thought that people didn't value what we had. Absolutely. With Graham. Absolutely. With, you know, the, especially on the producer sides, I thought they were getting left behind in terms of, like, profile, in terms of people respecting their, their work. And I thought, no, like, let me make a platform that is levels like a dubstep label or a drum and bass label and, and present it as something that was, yeah, like, levels, you know what I'm saying? have a brand and artwork and nights and it all being cohesive. And like the first wave of the, the first few years, it's like, I met all these musicians, Roti, Swindle, DJQ, Flavor D, Champion, Terra Danger, TRC, SX, Predator, Mr. Mitch, mm -hmm. Face Miyaki, mm -hmm. um, Sir Spyro, DOK, all these people that were like 10 times just more active going, beats, 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 beats. And it was like harnessing all this energy. And then maybe that's the first wave of buttons is that. Yeah. And now, like, you know, we have, like, me and Skill is, like, a, another ball of energy. Swindle was, like, pushed out into another ball of energy. And then it's like, OK, how do you balance all these things? And now, after learning from all of that, this is, like, my ball of energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's my yeah. first, like, kind of solo yeah, yeah. work, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's like, I, you know, I remember when you first announced, that, you know, you're, you're doing your own label, Butters, mm -hmm. and there's the iconic black and yellow. Fast forward all the way to 2023, we see black and yellow again, the uniform. Um, was, and I, I could be wrong, but I felt your, the squares was a rebuttal to the blackout squares during COVID. Was, is that, I mean, I could be wrong. For no, 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 it wasn't. Okay. But it just, it's just okay. coincidence. But just because the two, two, two colours are so common in so many different things, people think, oh, did you get from Boy in the Corner? Did you get from yeah. this? Did you get from Post-it Notes? Did yeah. you get from... Oh, the flip of the black square. I'm like, no, nah. it was just my branding. The reason why it was the branding in the first place is because I thought like a lot of artwork in the scene and scenes wasn't that good. So I was like, let's just have no artwork. Yeah. Strip it down, two colors, black and yellow. And it was like cheaper to print it like that on vinyl. So it was like 700 pounds to print four colors, right. 500 pounds to print two colors. <laughs> Only had five bills, me and Will, Skillium, 250 each, press the first record, and that's what got all of this work moving. There's, some, there's something I admire about starting a creative venture, especially with music, finding your kinmanship, finding your tribe, and till this day, you see you guys are as close as ever, You're, you guys are practically family, and working together in that, like, how does that feel to build those relationships, but still have it last the test of time at, at, at this moment of time? Yeah, I, I guess over time that's become more important than the creative. And like um, on this visual show, the royalty, who again I started with with Butters, has worked on the animation and bringing it to life in this big way. I, the show wouldn't have been possible without royalty. Mm. So even though we're not doing a Butters project, like, yeah, we've He's worked still in, yeah, side by side with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And that's been awesome. And like as everyone's just grown up and like, it's how many people have friends for like 15 years? Not many. Yeah. We've been friends for longer, than 25 that. years. Yeah. And like, I'm so blessed to like be able to like live in the same place, same Absolutely. quarters, mix around the same people. And yeah, like maintain those relationships is like, yeah, it's essential. What's some of your favorite slogans of the Yellow Squares? Some of the things that you've written or maybe other people's written that you've really like resonated with? And yeah, I think it's all of the things kind of around urgency. So like time is the creative director. It's just like, okay, you've got this spark of inspiration. The moment you decide to do it tomorrow, it's going to be a different thing. And a lot of these 
these squares have been very impulsive and then just like, okay, I'll write it down. Then you, did you think of a way to like write it down? Then you think of a way to share it. Then you think of ideas you can build within that idea. That's been pretty fun. Um, what else is there? Like, is this still true at scale? Mm. So mm. if I say to you an idea or maybe something that is bordering on advice is, does that make sense when it's just you? Or does it make sense when there's a thousand people? Does it make sense when it's someone in Mumbai, someone in Sao Paulo, someone in Tokyo? All of these, I'm trying to still make them apply as broad as possible. So that's the limitation. It's not like, oh, these only, these only work for that, for man in London, you get yeah, me, like, with yeah. all your access to resources. Social media as a canvas works anywhere. Yeah. Like, if you use social media as a canvas, not an advertising board, it doesn't matter what city you live in. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. One of one, greater than number one, true anywhere. Close out, make the thing true anywhere. Yeah. Document your thing. Anyone can document, document the thing with what we have. I think that's why it resonates with so many people. Like, some people can relate to these messages. And some people need to hear some of these messages because a lot of people, I feel like a lot of creatives, they, they just doubt themselves because they think they don't know what to do or they think, or they think that is not the way to do things. But sometimes it can be so simple. And that's what I love about what you're doing. Um, a lot of this has gone all over. Like I've, I've seen a lot of billboards, uh, advertising of these clothes, the app, make the thing. Uh, it was in Latin Orient football stadium. It was in a billboard in Wolfenstein where we grew up. It was all over London. Um, how does that, how is, how is the feeling of that? It's like maybe just walking around, seeing things like that. You might walk somewhere, you don't even realize that it's gonna be advertised there. Like, what's, how does that make you feel? Yeah, at first it was just for jokes, you know? I think that's a good place to start things. Like just, oh, like that would be funny if I will just put the billboard in my hands um, and bring it to life, bring it out of Instagram. Like, we, again, we're spending too much time in the app. Okay, like, let me make something that exists outside of it. And you ever speak to someone about something that's happening online to someone that's not online? <laughs> they look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> like, oh, you're doing a project on Instagram like that's like writing on yellow notes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, what, yeah. what is that? Yeah. But then when you put it in real life, it makes sense. Yeah. Or they get it straight away or you have a different kind of interaction with it. So, yeah. Um, I want to kind of touch about your experiences in Japan. Uh, you and your team was able to go to Japan and, and just, you know, see a thriving grime scene there and really like help them and harness their, their creativity. What was that like? That must have been insane. Yeah, I think a lot of people want to go to Japan or like they think, oh, it's a place that they grow up wanting to go and they're not sure why they want to go there. Like maybe they watch anime or wrestling or yeah. gaming or something like that. Whereas I had all those things too, but then music on top of that. And the promoters that brought us there had been bringing British music there for nearly 20 years before they brought us. Right. So there was a long history of grime, dubstep, drum and bass, jungle there before us. Right. And then that's like a, just a continuation of it. So it's not as like isolated as like, okay, this is a grime scene. It's like, there's the people that are brought up on British music in the same way that we have. And that's, that's it. You have a passion as, as much as you have a passion for music and creativity, you really have a passion of giving back. I feel like you, there's something about you that wants to help others or just wants to just even just advise others or just you know, have chats with people with, all over the music. Where does that come from? Because like, there's so many people that do music, they do their thing and they don't, that's a rare thing where people want to give back and share wisdom with others. Because they think that they just need it to keep for themselves, you know? Yeah, I don't think I'm sharing wisdom necessarily. It's just curiosity. And I think like, being able to ask questions has afforded me a lot of opportunities. Okay. So like being close to people, working with all these artists, um, seeing the show set up, and just, yeah, just being a generally curious person means, you know, I can... Like spark conversations, yeah. yeah like, and that's been, like, yeah. that's been really helpful. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's, that's more the thing. It's not like I'm trying to give, it's an exchange, yeah. for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, the, 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 con the show is going to be on tonight, Just Jams. Uh, Jams is going to perform. Um, how, much, how much of did you know of his work before you guys started collaborating? And um, we, I interviewed him in 2016, so, so I guess since then, so yeah. maybe like 2015, 2016. And yes, we played shows together, booked him for nights. Um, and he had like exchanges here and there, but I got to know him through this project. 
and we, we share an affinity. Like he's gone to Brazil, performed yeah. um, in a Brazilian grime scene, and we know some of the same people. And that's been a sick overlap, just just coincidentally at yeah. the same time. Yeah. So yeah, like all of our kind of worlds are is it fold together. Is it controversial for me to say you were one of the main reasons that grime is going to those parts of the regions of the world? Is that controversial for me to say? No, I, don't, I think we. We had, there's, there's, two, there's two things. We wanted to, again, we're curious, me, Skilliam, Swindle. Swindle went to these places and made music. Yeah. So we're super curious. We had like small opportunities to go there to play shows with people and connect. There's that level. And then there's like, when we, all this stuff was re-emerging, there wasn't an opportunity to just do shows in the UK like there is today. True. Like all of these like big festival brands and stuff, they weren't having us. At, so no, we didn't have a choice. No, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. So we had to travel to make a living we had to go all over the world to, to get our voices and brand heard. So if, in the, yeah, let's say we started and then the, the thing blew up over the UK, we might not have gone to all these places in the end. But because it was like a London thing and we'll occasionally come to Brighton or to Manchester or to Sheffield, like to make it work, we had to go everywhere that was possible to do a right, show. Right, so that makes sense. Okay. Well, I'm excited for tonight, man. I Thank can't, you. I can't wait to see what happens tonight. So. Um, we're going to have some documentations on it today on this, on this, on this, on this, on this, on this um, episode. Elijah, thank you so much for, for joining me today. Thank man. you. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens later. And uh, I love the album. And thank you. Close man. the app. Make the team. Right. <laughs>